Hello everybody, this is Yellow Demon Hurler, back with more of the Beginner's Guide. Um, when we left off, we went into a uh, small sort of ranch house, doubling as a cafe, and made our way down this um, set of abstract stairs to this cold concrete room. Looks kind of like a military complex. With all these low, round um, arches. Now we've come to a uh, cattle pen. Cattle pen leading to prison cages. The music just changed. Uh huh. So my progress has been blocked. I'm forced into this cattle pen. So you're going along, looking at uh, the end of the tunnel, and then this, this gate swings open. And the only way you can go is either back where you came from or into this cattle pen slash prison. So, and then it closes behind you. Oop. Visible wall. Even though there's a ledge here, I can't go on it. This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. Huh. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Yes. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. Hmm. There wasn't. So, after, um, after coming here, getting, uh, being blocked off, you're cattle shooted into here and stuck there for an hour. Now you can't go back, but you can go forward. Cattle shoots or cattle pens inaccessible, inaccessible. Huh. Oh, a light. You know, a minor detail. My usual impulse as a um, gamey gamer would be to uh, go off this ledge and just pop down the stairs. The glass prevents that. Similarly, this glass here prevents me from doing it. There's those three dots again. It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. Hmm. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Well, I already gave you my interpretation. 
sort of the sort of a one door closes another door opens sort of thing and conversely in order to open that other door you have to close the first one so this is a stark change in uh, architecture from the cold concrete we're still concrete but this is a lot more colorful now we also have sky but to get here, we had to be trapped in that cattle, uh, cattle pen for an hour. Another closed door behind me. Fireplace. Here, Kuda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Mm -hmm. Did I come from up above? What was up there? So I can tell them any of the things that um, I have seen. World stamped with whiteness. Enormous prison I spent hours in. Floating colored blocks. I'm going to talk about the world stamped with whiteness because it's the farthest out that I've been. That's the world above. You've been there. Now this is important. Do you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? Yes, I did. That was literally the last thing I did before coming here. No, I don't remember having to go through any puzzle. Either not paying attention or a lie, or I'd prefer not to tell you. After all, we've only just met. Hmm. The, um, the narrator mentioned that um, people perceive the author of this game as um, sort of distant and cold. So I'm going to see what happens if I answer like maybe he would. I prefer not to tell you after all we've only just met. But you don't understand. We are trapped here. The puzzle is our only escape. We need to get through it. You think you want to get through, but trust me, you don't. Let me describe it for you. Let me tell you all about what is over there. All right, I will tell you how to solve it. Hmm. Given no clear indication on uh, what what uh, solution uh, answer will lead to what. To what outcome I'm gonna act as I would act and be helpful but first look at these uh, these characters gray bodies with sort of a patchwork legs I'll tell you how to solve it wonderful So, having said that we will answer, can I get up here? No. I'm literally, these people are literally inaccessible. So having said that I will answer, I then say nothing. And then leave. Or I'll stay there with them forever. And again, this door closing behind me. Same room different colors. No, I've been right here this entire time. Black space between the doors. Um, actually, now that you mentioned, I remember feeling strange that I passed it. Uh, well, I do remember it. It did catch my attention. too hard about it. You'll see it again soon. Hmm. Okay, another change in architecture. We've got this these blank white plaster walls now. 
And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Hmm. Blank space. And now this is closed behind me. It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're gonna see it in the work as well. His games are just gonna become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Hmm. I wonder if the music, April 2000, the original game, or how this game is connected to the internet. Hmm, but I thought he never showed, um, I thought he never showed his works to uh, other people. Nice room, not. Ah, so this is not connected to the internet. This is... So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the yeah. internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. Mm -hmm. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, mm -hmm. I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. <laughs> so, keeping in mind that this is um, written, by, uh, written by the author, this shows his perception of the internet and he's uh, not that far off so we got negativity confusion negative negativity frustration as well yeah minor language there well more than minor but hmm so these are simulated reactions. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Mm -hmm. Either way, to me they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. But it's ironic, isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing, I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Coda's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. Hmm. So that's an in, this is an interesting message. Less because of what it says, more because of how long it is and how hard it is to read it. You have to work 
and I was wondering if at any at some point I would um, scroll too far away and no longer be able to see it. Yep, he's been on the internet. Hmm. Again, we have this sort of, uh, these disconnected, um, sorts of barriers, although I suppose I could jump down on some of these, but others, I doubt I'm gonna get up there. So there's all this stuff that seems inaccessible. They seem to be getting more, more sort of, uh, we get more that are sort of reaching out as we go along. Don't hear the chimes. Hmm. That, um, Sounds seems like it ties to something else. Abstract, colorful. Oh, so no, I can't jump off the. Uh, can't jump off these ledges. Can I? No. Those ones are inaccessible. Again, there's this sense that there's more out there than uh, you can get to. Ah, there's another one of those sort of connecting messages, reaching out messages. Devil Tower Star. There's no tower. <laughs> I'm hearing whispering in the uh, music track. Wait a minute.
The game got a little got a little bit darker. Well, that's abstract art for you. Huh. So this is a repeat. It's a silly, nonsensical comment, but it's repeated. Messy from close up and perfect from far away, huh? Messy from close up and perfect from far away. You know... That um, that has applications to the creative process when you're uh, when you're down sort of in the nitty gritty of making something, writing a story, building a game, painting a picture. You are often acutely aware of its flaws, but other people uh, will come in and say, uh, "Hey, cool," and they won't uh, they won't be overly worried about the tiny uh, tiny flaws. Art. Hmm. So this one seems to have importance. If this painting had a label, it would be here. What does it say? From up here, it just looks like dots. I'm trying to figure out if the whispering is triggered by um, the the uh, mess of the notes here, but um, uh, it doesn't appear to be. It just seems to be part of the background track. He was himself the most horrible creature he could imagine. I'm getting a couple notes of self self loathing in these. Maybe I'll feel real someday. So this is building up to some sort of end. At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. Yeah, the whispers have gotten louder. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. Hmm. Hmm. So here we have people that are stuck. Asking for help. So if this does indeed represent sort of the closure to an issue, this um, this represents people who just can't, uh, they're stuck here. They just can't get past. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Okay. So we had, huh. um, speaking up a little bit, so we had lots of people here, lots and lots of people stuck, leaving notes. Up to this point, we've had lots of people. 
Now in this whole big long hallway, we just have this one note. So most people clearly do not get past that door. So, and this person who did get past the door is still clueless about how leaving notes, about connecting to, uh, connecting to people. Typewriters. Are you there? Please say something. Give me anything. I just need you to say something. Talk to me, please. Oh, you're having so much difficulty talking. Speak, 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 speak. Hmm. Okay, this one is tough. It's going to kind of just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Okay, so um, I am at 26 minutes and it is 2.40 in the morning, so I'm gonna have to call it quits here. Um, yeah, uh, wow, I'm gonna have to put uh, content warnings on this. Okay, uh, if you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing, and if you didn't, please let me know why. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!